Good evening again, YouTube friends. And we're back with the third and final, I promise, installment of The Last Jedi spoiler review. And we, I guess we can drop the title spoiler review because um, this movie was spoiled the minute it came out the gate. This movie has literally become one of my most hated films. Granted, it's still nowhere close to as bad as Independence Day Resurgence, and I'm sure you've seen that video and what I thought about that, but this movie was still a piece of shit. And I'd like to go over several points that I've noticed um, at having uh, some time to digest what the movie was and basically come to terms with it, go through my five stages of grief, and finally acceptance. I think tonight we need to uh, put a, a suit on this corpse, dig a hole, and put this dead son of a bitch in the ground. And uh, that dead son of a bitch is called Star Wars. I think basically Lucasfilm is telling all the fans to grow up and get over Star Wars and become adults. You know, it, it, it's gonna be painful for us. It's gonna be hard. It's kind of like having to put your dog down after it gets sick and it can't be, you know, it can't be cured. It's gonna be a tough growing experience, but I think that by facing this together, we can all move on. We're gonna go over several things that um, I've noticed about this movie that I'm, I, uh, that really fucking pissed me off. First off, who okayed this movie to be released? Did they not show it to test audiences? I guess not, because they're so fucking secretive. And that's what happens when you have isolation. When you insulate yourself from opinion, you get shit like the prequels, like George Lucas did. He was surrounded by yes men. There wasn't one brave soul willing to step up and go, dude, you're fucking this up. This isn't what your creation was meant to be, but you know, it is his, it is his creation. We have to accept that, and we've accepted the prequels at face value, but I'd rather watch episode two four times and watch episode eight one more time. God. But the insulation around Ryan Johnson, the writer-director of The Last Jedi, was very clear. No one stepped in and told him, hey, I don't think I'd take it that direction if I were you. Or maybe it wasn't Ryan's idea at all. Maybe he just caught up in this and tried to make the best movie he could with Kathleen Kennedy and her you know, ship of the Valkyries pushing him into an agenda. I really wonder if Kathleen Kennedy made Ryan Johnson plow that whiskered little midget face of his into that 2 a.m. drive through Arby's roast beef sandwich that she calls a bloated pussy uh, just for him to have a Star Wars movie. Because I probably would have done it. And I would have made it better. Now, yes, we all say I could have made it better. Or uh, a lot of theorists out there, I'm seeing a lot of videos going up about what they would do to change episode eight. And a lot of them are pretty good. And these are just average Joes who just love Star Wars. My point is, if an average Joe with a video camera and a YouTube channel can go on and come up with a more compelling story than what I saw on December 15th, the movie industry's in a big mess of fucking trouble. Which leads me to my first topic. There is an overall theme to this movie that I like to call the celebration of mediocrity, where no one's particularly amazing. No one's particularly powerful with the Force. The only person who is powerful with the Force is Snoke, and they kill him off. Exceptionalism is not allowed in a nihilistic idea. You have to be the same as everyone else. And even Luke saying that the Force does not belong to the Jedi, he's kind of right about that. It is in everyone. It is everywhere. But the Jedi are the ones who can manipulate it. But all we get in this movie is a Mary Sue lead character who does not develop in any way, who does not undergo any type of personal tragedy or um, a growing moment where she is forced to face something that irrevocably changes her forever. She just kind of goes with it and I have no idea what she learned except don't trust a man because he's gonna break your heart. 
and as I stated in the earlier video, we keep hearing about this raw power of Kylo Ren and this raw power of Rey, and they don't do anything particularly exceptional in this movie that makes you stop and wonder, whoa, they're powerful. In The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren is able to stop a blaster bolt in the middle of air, in mid-fucking air. He's able to freeze people in place and they can't do anything. He's able to dip into their minds and read their thoughts and their darkest desires. And in this movie, he doesn't seem any, he seems weaker. He seems more vulnerable, which is, I guess, is what they're trying to lead us to. Because I'm convinced that, you know, they said it in the movie that Kylo Ren will turn into Ben Solo again. He will renounce the dark side. That much is clear. But that leads to an even bigger question. Who's the main villain? Who is it? General Hux? They, he was just like a, a, a gag side character. He's basically C-3PO with a fucking uniform. And in The Force Awakens, General Hux even had a very powerful moment where he was almost bloodthirsty. He was foaming at the mouth, and I'm like, this dude is fucking serious. This dude means business. I wouldn't want to fuck with this guy or get on his bad side because he'll blow up my whole fucking planet. But in this movie, he's just a fucking, he's a laugh. He's a joke. Same as Kylo Ren. Same as Supreme Leader Snoke. Same as Luke Skywalker. They're jokes. You don't see anything powerful from them. The only power we see Luke demonstrate is when he blows apart that hut, when he finds Rey is touching hands with Kylo, and when he force projects himself across the galaxy. That's the only time we actually see him use power. And this movie keeps pointing to one simple fact that it's okay to be normal. Star Wars isn't about that. Star Wars is about the exceptional. Star Wars is an adventure. It is a, it is an epic tale of discovery, self-discovery, and adventure. I, I've had more fun watching People's Court than I did this movie. There are many moments where when I stop and think back on the movie, it leaves me speechless. I don't know what to say because I don't know what the fuck that was. I can't believe that a movie that was this anticipated and this theorized, I mean, I can't, there were oceans of theories about what will happen in episode eight and almost nothing came to fruition. It was just a big fucking gag. Um, Ryan, it seems like Ryan Johnson trolled all the Star Wars fans and then told us that, well, we don't appreciate his work or we don't understand what he was trying to do. I think Star Wars fans know exactly what Ryan Johnson was trying to do. He was trying to kill Star Wars. And he's trying to make it an overall theme that everyone has the Force. And it does having the ability to manipulate the Force doesn't make you special anymore. Well, is everyone a fucking ninja? Does everyone have super mathematical abilities like Albert Einstein? or have talent like William Shakespeare or Steven Spielberg? No, they're exceptional people. They're masters of their craft. Jedi are masters of the force. The point is, it's not pushing a mediocre main character as a Mary Sue who's perfect in every way, doesn't suffer in any way, and doesn't grow in any way. She can just do anything with the force she wants to and you leave the mystery over her, so we'll come back to actually find out what happens in Nine, which personally I think they're just gonna leave her what she is. A useless character who does all the right things and isn't special at all. Back to mediocrity. My point is if Disney expected um, big profits, they have to take big risks. You go for the middle ground, you try to be mediocre, um, you're going to get mediocre results. You look at Rotten Tomatoes, it has less than 50% approval from general audiences. But way in the 90s for the critics, so who's the dumbasses here? It's either the critics are right and we're all dumb and wrong, or we're right and the critics are fucking paid. And I'm willing to bet the latter is true. And it's not just the critics that are paid, it seems like there is a whole group of people that are being pandered to with this new direction that Star Wars wants to go to. And that's where we've reached our second topic of the evening.
this blatant pushing of social and political ideologies and agendas. As I said in the previous video, I don't want politics in my fucking Star Wars. I don't want agendas in my Star Wars. And I'm sure most of you don't either. But when you stop and think about it, almost every Star Wars movie has been driven by a political or a social movement. The original Star Wars was made at a time of great anxiety and distrust in the nation. We were in the middle of the Vietnam War. It wasn't going well. NASA had just uh, completed the Apollo program and it didn't look like they were going into space anytime soon. A lot of movies from that era were very gloom and doom and very dystopian, uh, showing a very dark future. And Star Wars gave us hope of a brighter future. Now, think back to the prequels. George Lucas wrote those around the time when George Bush was in office and pushing endless meaningless war for the sake of political gain. And he very much kind of tied that into how Palpatine came to power. So these Star Wars has been driven by things happening in the real world, uh, but it was very watered down in the previous films. This one, it's right up in your face and it's breath fucking stinks. <laughs> From feminist agendas to social justice agendas to, like I said again, the pushing of mediocrity, pandering to the lowest common denominator, making Star Wars basically just kind of like a fucking Big Mac at McDonald's. It's cheap, it tastes the same as everything else, and it doesn't fill you up. So my opinion is that if Lucasfilm wants to survive this, because this is going to backfire, and if Solo is anything like The Last Jedi, which with the people that are in charge right now, I get the feeling it's gonna be that way. It's gonna be a huge flop and no one's gonna like it. And the worst part is today is January 27th, 2018. Uh, the movie comes out in less than, a little less than four months. And we haven't seen shit. They are locking it up. They are keeping it behind the curtain. That's not a good sign when you're not pushing your shit, especially in the middle of the summer films coming up and you're not marketing a movie, your second standalone movie. Rogue One performed fantastically. It looks like Solo is on its way down the drain before it even gets shown to audiences. No one's, I, I'm not excited for it. I'm not even excited for episode nine. The, the only thing that's gonna stop this this uh, jumping off of fans just basically giving up on it is if you put someone else new in charge. And that's where Kathleen Kennedy comes into play because she is very much pushing an agenda. She seems to be rubbing Star Wars fans' noses in shit, going, no, you don't, that's not what Star Wars is. Like she knows any fucking better. She was a fucking executive producer for some of the greatest filmmakers of our modern time. She wasn't a creative consultant. She wasn't a writer. She wasn't a basic producer. She was an executive. She was a financier. She brought the money to the movies that we grew up loving. And now the only thing she's bringing to the movies we love is an agenda that everyone's sick of hearing about. Feminist issues, social justice issues. People go to the theater to get away from that, Kathleen. Did you know that? People go there for escapism. They don't want the fucking modern day world rubbed in their fucking face when they want to have a little escapism. It's okay to have an agenda or a, uh, an overall theme you want to put in the movie. That's where most art comes from, is from reality. But you have to mask it. You have to make it a little absurd or make it lighthearted enough that we don't recognize it, that it's there. But this was right out in the open in The Last Jedi. Luke Skywalker was a, a worthless hermit pussy who didn't want to leave his island because he wanted to die. Okay, he's a depressed, middle-aged man who says, fuck it, I'm done, because I made a mistake. And Poe Dameron, who is the hotshot pilot, is turned into basically a little boy and demeaned by the women that outrank him. And where Haldo didn't want to tell him the plan because she's in charge. Just basically this women are better than men kind of crap. And you know, you don't need to know. I mean, what the fuck was the point not telling him the plan? Because if you hadn't told him, if you would have just told him the fucking plan, we wouldn't have had to go to fucking Canto Bight and be wasted by that. 
that would have been, that was a complete waste of the movie's time. Now, while I'm bitching and moaning and complaining and on, you know, my third rant about this fucking movie, I will have to give it one compliment. It was probably the most beautiful Star Wars movie I've seen. Visually, it was breathtaking, it was stunning. That shows that Ryan Johnson can direct a film and make it look beautiful, because this film was fucking beautiful. From start to end, even the stupid things, like Leia in space, yeah, it was dumb, but it still looked good. And I think that's what kind of carried me at first through, it was like it looked beautiful, and I'm like, yeah, that, okay, that's different, but it looks great. Just goes to show you can polish a turd. So as far as like any compliments I have, visually it was stunning and beautiful. Uh, the sound design was amazing. Um, there were so many little things in there that, you know, you shouldn't be paying attention to, but it did stand out. And I do remember that like just the subtle animal voices or the robots or the alien voices, they were very well done. Even those, you know, space Pikachus that, you know, Finn and Rose rode on. Those were pretty interesting. They were beautiful. But that's not what should be sticking out to me, is just the visuals and the sound. The story should have me ignoring all of that. But the story was just lacking, and that's all I was paying attention to. Which brings me to the next topic. The destruction of the antagonist. Every good movie has a protagonist and an antagonist. But they killed Snoke, now you have no antagonist. Who are you fighting? What are you standing against? Now it's Kylo Ren we're standing against? This movie almost got me on his side. And I was done with fucking Kylo Ren after he killed Han Solo. I was like, fuck that son of a bitch. He killed his father. He killed Han Solo. Fuck him. But now with the death of Snoke... We're all left going, what now? This leaves a big hole that I don't think you can just write your way out of or, or uh, dazzle people back into the story because the main villain is dead. I mean, you look at all the great you know, epic trilogies, there's not many of them, but one that comes to mind with me is Lord of the Rings. What would Return of the King have been if they had killed Sauron in the second movie. My point exactly. It would have been a three and a half hour ending, which the ending of Return of the King was, it felt like three hours. My point is you don't go killing your main villain halfway through a trilogy. I think episode nine is going to be the death of Star Wars as we know it. I don't even know how to put it. It felt like Star Wars was a very close friend of ours, like a family member that we loved very much. And we, in episode eight, was basically kind of like, you know, being told that your family member or your best friend has cancer and they're going to die. Some of the story elements, like, yes, I'm okay that Luke died. I'm okay with that. It's how he died that I don't agree with. And Leia, same story. She didn't die. But she should have, flying the Rattus into the supremacy. I mean, that would have been the greatest way for her to go out. Um, and, if you, and if you really want Luke to die, he needs to die like Obi-Wan did. Facing his former apprentice, who had fallen to the dark side, and in full view of Rey, allows himself to be cut down. Because that would have given Rey some spiritual growth. She would have lost her mentor. And then she could start to grow as a character. But we end this movie... She feels... This feels like, I don't know, like, like a romantic teen comedy um, where, you know, the girl gets her heart... I mean, I, I mean, shit. Legally Blonde had better character development with the main character than this one did with Rey. But the two main characters we had from the originals, Luke and Leia, um, it was just... It was... It, it's like it's like watching someone beat up your friend and you're powerless to stop it. It's just this is so fucking dumb.
But in summation, it feels like Lucasfilm and Disney were pushing one main arc, one main story arc in this film that was kind of like a fuck you to Star Wars fans, and that was let the past die. What do you mean let the past die? Let what we love about Star Wars die? Because that's what it seemed like they were trying to do with this movie. They wanted us to give up on hope. The whole saga started out with a message of hope. And now it's basically a message of let it go, let it die. So are, is Lucasfilm asking us to let Star Wars die? I leave that up to you to actually sit and think about. Is this Disney and Lucasfilm's way of telling the Star Wars fans to grow the fuck up and get over it? And that they're too dumb to understand a good movie when they see it? It very much feels that way. So next time you see Mickey Mouse at Disneyland, tell him Trevor says hi. If you see Kathleen Kennedy on the street, which I doubt you will, I'm sure she has an entourage of people protecting her at all times, and she's very insulated from the world because it seems that she doesn't understand Star Wars. And she and Disney seem to think that, you know, the majority of Star Wars fans are... Um, stupid, dumb, idiot males who um, live in their parents' basement. So if you see Kathleen Kennedy, just walk up and kick her in the cunt. There was a lot that people were hoping to see in this movie. And I know not everyone's expectations can be met, but when over 50% of your audience doesn't like the way you went with it, and then you proceed to call them misguided, Ignorant, dumb, not getting the big picture. <sighs> they need to get George Lucas involved again. I'm, I, you know, I dreaded that thought. I was very much on board with Lucas being completely out of it um, when they announced that J.J. Abrams was going to be d directing and co-writing um, The Force Awakens. I, I was perfectly fine with that. And then I watched the movie... And it felt like Star Wars, but there was a little something missing there. There was a lot of, uh, it left more questions than any of the Star Wars film had, which brought us to eight. And we thought, well, maybe we'll get some answers to it. But we were just basically that from Ryan Johnson. He's like, fuck you. I'm not giving you nothing you want. Because cause Aunt Kathy says I have to do what she wants. And she wants women strong in this movie. The women weren't even fucking strong. They were Idiots, they were dumb, they weren't, they weren't even, the women did not advance in any way in this movie except they were in charge, or they were the main characters, and all the other men were dumb, and all the men were fucking idiots. But the women didn't do anything admirable. The only one who did was Haldo, and you know, I was glad to see her die anyway. If she's dumb enough not to tell her lead squadron commander the plan of what she's doing and why she's doing it when he's staging a mutiny, you should just told him right then and there. Like, look, you don't have to stage a mutiny. Here's what I'm doing. Why do you have to keep it secret from people on board? Are you afraid that the First Order has agents on board? If so, what the fuck does it matter? You're out of range of the big fucking ship. You can just keep fucking going, and if you find out that there's a fucking conspirator on board, leave him behind! Fuck him! What the fuck are... There is so... Oh, Jesus Christ. And I'm getting pissed. But again, if you want to watch it, great. If you love it, great. I'm happy for you. If you love that movie, I'm not dissing you. In fact, I'm happy that you love it. Because at least now, you love Star Wars, I love Star Wars. We just disagree on this movie. And that's fine. That makes for fun debates. You know, you know what debates are, kids? It's where two people argue, and they get along while doing it. Might try that next time you're at a college campus with your fucking signs. Have a talk with someone. You might learn a little bit something about yourself. Now Lucasfilm needs to go out and talk to the fucking fans and ask them, what could we do better? You know, every other fucking business in the world has these customer satisfaction surveys where they ask people, what did you think? And they take that feedback and they incorporate it into their business plan. Lucasfilm's business plan is make it up as you go along and fuck them if they don't like it. Because we have all the fucking money we need. Now granted, I was not expecting a perfect movie coming out of this. I expected a much better movie than the one I saw. So if that makes me misguided or idiotic or uh, just not able to get Star Wars, sorry Disney. 
If Solo sucks, yeah, of course I'm gonna go see it. Of course I'm gonna watch it. But if Solo sucks, my hope for the future of Star Wars under your command, Disney, is gone. But in summation, I still hate this movie. Um, I'll probably never like it. I'm so tired of talking about it. I am, I'm really, I'm running out of shit to say because I, it doesn't deserve this, this movie does not deserve this much attention from me. Um, had it been great, yeah, I probably, I, I would not have made these videos if they were great. I wouldn't even made a review of how good it was because, you know, if it's good, you're not going to hear from me. Which I guess is not a good thing to go on YouTube and pour negativity into it, but they sure as hell poured a lot of their negativity into this movie, and I think we should answer in kind. And it seems like we already have. It seems like when I walk through stores, Star Wars toys are not selling. And I think that's hilarious, because that's a big part of their profits. And it goes to show you that Lucasfilm and Disney have poisoned this franchise. Hopefully not to the point where it can't be redeemed, because this... This, this franchise has to be redeemed. Otherwise, it's going to die. But for the last time, in regards to The Last Jedi, this is Trevor Klump saying, fuck this movie. And may the Force be with you. Good night.